Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org and there's big news today. Fusion I.O. is being acquired by SanDisk and we're going to break this down. Uh, joining me is David Floyer for his breaking analysis. David, thanks for coming on. Hi there, Dave. Yes, exciting news, isn't it? Well, so SanDisk is about a $6 billion company with a $23 billion market cap. Uh, Fusion I.O. is about a $430 million company with today a one point you know two three billion dollar one point three billion dollar market cap because of the the announcement the stock's up about twenty five percent on the day at one point fusion i o was trading at a valuation of over two billion dollars and the company was very narrowly focused uh, a lot of its sales were focused on big hyperscale giants like facebook and apple uh, and and the like uh, so the business was kind of lumpy wasn't it david very lumpy indeed um, and there was a, you know, a downturn in sales, which hit them hard. Um, their long-term ambition is always to be uh, the memory company, to, to regard Flash as, as an extension of memory in the server itself. Uh, but they never really got there. It was always treated as disk drives and uh, very lumpy sales, as you said, at the high end. And they, they never got the volume. Uh, to uh, to get, get it into the general marketplace. Yeah. So as I said, their stock's trading up today. Uh, it's it's been hovering, you know, pretty consistently up over 11, 11.4, you know, roughly uh, at a at a nice premium, about a 23% premium to where it was uh, at Friday's close. Uh, but not an enormously disgusting premium, David. I mean, does this no, signify no. that potentially somebody else? could come in and who else might be interested in Fusion IO? Yeah, this is, uh, as you say, it's not a high premium. Um, it, it, you can either look at it from two points of view. Who else as a uh, flash provider uh, would be in the market for this? So people like Samsung, people like obviously Toshiba is a, is a partner of um, SanDisk. Um, uh, people like uh, Micron or people like um, Intel, uh, those could look at it from that point of view and look at it as a way of getting the software stack to make, uh, to, to add value to the very up and down market price that is Flash. And if you look at mar uh, what happens when a new a version of the, uh, when a new smaller uh, size comes out of the Flash chips, uh, the, the, the prices crash for a bit and then they stabilize and even go up a bit and then the next one comes and they crash again. So it's a very uh, difficult market to be just the flash supplier and obviously uh, SanDisk wants to be in that market and, and other people that would buy it would be similar people. Um, Samsung I think has more aspirations. They've tried already to buy SanDisk uh, itself. Uh, so that's a possibility later on. Um, and the other guys, Intel, for me, the Intel would be the natural one because they're closest to the server and could use that to, uh, to create a very good uh, uh, product. So you don't, see, other, you don't see any of the server guys, or do you see any of the server guys interested? I was just going to say that the other group of people could be the server guys. Um, uh, I, IBM would have been a natural, but they've sold off. Uh, everything to Lenovo, and I'm sure Lenovo doesn't have the uh, capability of buying them at this stage, uh, so they're out. HP well, let's be online. clear on that. So they, IBM sold its x86 business to Lenovo, and you're yeah. into, I'm inferring from what you said that that's really where Fusion IO would fit. So when you said Absolutely. everything, that's what you meant. Yeah. I mean, in theory, they could try and apply to other things, but that, that you know, it's the 86 business that matters. No volume. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so who um, else? So, so HP uh, can't buy anything, and they are, they are fixated on memoristas. What's very interesting to me is SanDisk announced a month ago the 15 nanometer flash um, coming out later this year. Uh, that's 128 gigabit flash chips. Isn't that amazing? Um, so memoristas are nowhere near that level of density or cost or anything else like that. So HP should be thinking about it, but they can't. Uh, and that leaves people uh, like, like Dell, um, and they're not really in that business. Um, and uh, 
who else? Uh, so you say HP can't because you're saying that Meg is still paying down the debt and she has said we're right. not going to do yeah. any big acquisitions until we've paid down that debt, right? That's your point there. That's right, yeah. And uh, of course at HP Discover, Martin Fink uh, put forth a vision of the machine, which was yep. a, uh, a, a large shared memory system, but you know, distributed cluster you know, of nodes based on Memristor. And uh, I had tweeted out, and David, this is your point all along, is that um, they got to compete with the, 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 the price of Flash, and that's going to be very challenging them for them to do that. Longer term, it may have some potential, we'll see. There are people like Jean-Luc Chatelain, the CTO of Data Domain, who's very high on Memristor, former HP employee, by the way, just for full disclosure. But David, you've been uh, saying that really Flash is going to be here to stay, even in the enterprise, for quite some time. Flash has two things. It has the consumer market underlying it. So all of the 15 nanometer is driven to a large extent by the consumer market. And the flash for the enterprise and the flash for you know, big data and things like that is a small proportion of that total marketplace, whereas memristors are only at the top. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, flash is coming down. The, 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 the idea was that memristor was going to come in or other things like it, IBM's PCM uh, technology was going to come in and uh, take, it, take over from flash. But, Flashes continue to come down. The, the roadblocks that people foresaw in it have been overcome by smart people. All right, David, let's, uh, let's break this down in a little bit more detail. Let's look at Fusion IO. Fusion IO, as we said, specializing in the hyperscale business was the high flyer at one point in time, uh, some lumpy business. It, it, it came back very strong after the first downturn when Facebook and Apple and other big hyperscale guys put the brakes on never came back quite the same way a second time around. They had to make management, management changes. Shane Roberson came in, ostensibly to beef up the sales. Well, this is one way to beef up the sales is to sell the company to somebody <laughs> with a larger channel. Um, we were very high on Fusion IO, in particular yeah. because of their technology, their software technology that allowed primitives to be written directly to flash as an extension of memory, eliminating not only the spinning disk, which all flash does, but eliminating the disk protocol, for example, SCSI protocol, which is very overhead intensive and, and, and chatty. We saw that as an opportunity to completely change application development, application design. It never happened. Why not? Were we wrong about that? It's taking longer. I mean, uh, it is happening. Um, you're, see, you're seeing now uh, a whole set of announcements coming out from the database vendors uh, MySQL now supports the atomic rights. That's eliminating the SCSI overhead. Uh, both, all three, Pocona, Intel, uh, sorry, Pocona, Oracle, and uh, MariaDB. Uh, very interesting announcement from Microsoft. Uh, SQL 2014 uh, has got some very nice flash uh, aware technologies uh, built into it. Uh, so the, the database vendors are coming out with that, and the ISVs, the, the, the people who are designing the systems born in the cloud, are starting that type of design. Uh, but the whole cycle is a longer cycle when it, uh, when it, goes to, uh, when it comes to the database design. That's a 10-year cycle as opposed to the two, three-year cycle for technology or a five-year cycle for technology. That's going to be a longer but I still believe that's where the future is. And SanDisk, if they get into that marketplace and help support the applications in a different way, support the operating systems, uh, for example, putting all of the operating system into Flash uh, and being able to get that at lightning speed, uh, support the uh, databases, being able to do the same thing, very large memory uh, databases supported by Flash. Um, and then support a completely different sort of design where all, where you can do transaction processing, where you do analytic processing, and uh, get rid of that 40-year uh, dinosaur, which is the disk drive itself. Okay, so um, I tweeted out actually this morning is in re reference to the, the sort of alternative bidders, doesn't everybody want you know, atomic rights to go compete with DSSD from, uh, that EMC just acquired? And Howard Marks actually had an interesting tweet. He said, uh, at DeVellante, when T10 approves atomic rights, it becomes standard operating procedure. 
And then the other piece of, of information he shared was PCIe Flash is an OEM market and Flash Foundry vendors like SanDisk are in the catbird seat. We'll talk about SanDisk in a moment, but he's talking about uh, a, a standards committee, T10 approving atomic rights and then not NVMe becomes a, a standard. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, there's a lot more required uh, to, to get it done than getting the T10 standard. You've got to have a stack itself. You've got to have solid uh, software which interacts with the controller itself, very tightly, tightly coupled. That's what SanDisk are getting here. The other very interesting thing that SanDisk has come out with, they bought a smart storage and together they have the capability of putting the flash um, onto the DRAM, on straight onto the memory bus. They've come out with a product which does that. Uh, the smart storage allow them to make it look like a SATA disk, which is, um, you know, interestingly, a quick way of doing it, but it is not the most uh, effective way of doing it at all. Uh, so bringing together the Fusion I.O. software putting that on as an alternative onto the memory bus directly and providing a, a soup to nuts uh, ability. The T10 is the standard from which a programming standard, but underneath that to provide the uh, controller software, the, the Linux software, uh, Fusion IO have a lot of patents in that area, not uh, patents, a, a, a lot of know-how and actually patents as well in that area. So. There's a lot that uh, that uh, Sandisk can do to uh, be be the leader in that market, and that's a, a much higher margin market than the uh, traditional flash market, the NAND chips. Uh, so I think it's a good 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 move for them. And if you look at storage as a whole, we've said consistently it's going away from the SAN towards the server. And within the server, it's going towards the memory itself. This is where a lot of storage, a lot of change is going to happen. And the, the master copy of data is going to be in the, in the, uh, in the server itself. Okay, so uh, let's talk about SanDisk and, and from their perspective, you, you touched on that a little bit. SanDisk is known for thumb drives. Uh, as I say, it's growing very nicely, growing 22% a year growth rate, uh, $6 billion company from a revenue standpoint, nice valuation at over 20 billion. To me, this is about SanDisk expanding its total available market. I mean, we've seen SanDisk at the various shows. We saw them at Oracle Open World. They were just, we were just at HP Discover last week. They had a booth there. They had a presence there. Uh, they're hiring people that understand the enterprise. Isn't this about a TAM expansion move for SanDisk? Absolutely. And I, I, I think uh, if, you look, if you're looking for the next EMC in storage, it's going to come from the Samsungs, the SanDisks, the Toshibas of the world. Uh, coming down into that marketplace with most of the added value being in the controllers, in the software at the high, at the, at the uh, heart of it. Uh, so that's going to be a very different model to the current model where the expertise was in how to manage uh, slow disks, how to manage uh, the, trans the very slow transfer of data from very fast processes down to those disks. So, I think it's, uh, it's the start of a, a profound change in the storage industry. Very interesting, you're, uh, you're saying a new breed of storage vendors is, uh, is emerging, you're seeing all these, these tectonic shifts from the SAN to the server, and that's going to cause some disruptions uh, to the existing storage companies. Um, will they all make it through the knothole? Um, no, <laughs> clearly. Um, they, these things are, are slow to start with. Uh, as I've said in my forecasts on server sand, for example, they're very slow to start with, but they are going to accelerate. And over the next uh, 10, 15 years, we're going to see a profound change as the, the disk drives become just very standard, uh, low cost, uh, low access uh, uh, products and all of the action, all of the invention goes towards the flash end of the marketplace and is owned by essentially the, the flash providers. All right, David, thank you very much. Great breaking analysis, appreciate you coming on and thanks for watching everybody. Uh, big news today, we'll be tracking this. Check out siliconangle.tv uh, for this and other videos. Check out 
SiliconAngle.com and Wikibon.org for more analysis. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.